I think the people that in life are successful are the people that have searched within themselves and found the reason to get up, the reason to go to bed at night, the reason to work hard, and the reason to deny immediate self-gratification when the time comes. The people that succeed and achieve at accomplishing any one of our goals, I believe are people that are able to tap into other levels of their personal concentration um, and belief in self that otherwise we can take for granted. Kai Green, the morning after winning the 2010 Arnold Classic, gives a speech to a select audience at a Sunday morning training seminar. I say this to prepare this one idea, and that is that just with all the champions that have been celebrated for being successful this weekend, you have something in common with each and every one of them, you know, and that is your personal ability to achieve, aim, and excel at whatever it is you choose to do. Um, I believe that the ability to succeed starts with making the decision to do so. Um, and once you make the decision to do that, then by just deciding, as my coach and my mentor has shared with me, um, half the battle is already won. The Kai Green giving this speech today is a far cry from the Kai Green I met in Las Vegas while he was preparing for the Olympia. As a documentary filmmaker sent by Kai's sponsor, Muscle Meds, it was my first experience spending time with an Olympia caliber athlete. I was there to show what it is like to prepare for the most intimidating contest in bodybuilding. Nothing about that trip was as I expected. What I encountered in that arid desert was an athlete in a voluntary exile committed to a monk-like existence for seven weeks. With the help of his mentor and trainer, Oscar Arden, Kai was pushing himself to his physical and mental limits, and at times, pushing a bit beyond. His placing at the Olympia, though one of the best first outings in the history of the contest, was seen as a disappointment, and the shock of falling short of his goal was evident when he spoke. That's supposed to be, why are they handing me? Yep, they're handing me. I'm in shock. They gotta keep it together. Yeah, I'm just waiting for what I ordered. This is not what I ordered. But now, six months later, a different Kai presents himself. Today, his purpose seems clear, his words more focused. There's a success that you're able to walk away from this experience with, and it's your responsibility to use it effectively. Be encouraged when you see someone else achieve something. Make sure that you understand what is at the core of their success. In this moment, I'm encouraging each and every one of you to understand and acknowledge that the power of mind, the power of the ability to make a decision, the power to decide to be and tap into my better resources are at the core of my success today. And I challenge you to take that home with yourself. During the months of training leading up to this day, the contrast with Vegas has been dramatic. No longer chasing the physiques of other competitors, Kai has been true to himself these past months, and it has paid off. For the next hour, we will examine what it takes to become a champion, what it takes to go from fourth place to first. Travel with Kai from Brooklyn to Columbus, from uncertainty to confidence, from disappointment to redemption.
Chai Green Redemption is made possible by MuscleMed, bodybuilding supplements, methyl aromatest, hexogen, enoxide, carnivore, carnivore liquid protein shots, methyl burn extreme, and code red. Learn more about the science of the supplements that helped Kai Green win the Arnold Classic by visiting the Muscle Meds website today. Go to www.musclemedsrx.com. Kai Green returns to his hometown of Brooklyn, New York, after a disappointing fourth place showing at the 2009 Mr. Olympia competition. Kai's recent successes in bodybuilding have not yet enabled him to leave the somewhat depressed area in which he has lived in a small apartment for the past few years. His hope is that bodybuilding will eventually be the catalyst that will propel him out of Brooklyn and into a new life. Still working toward that objective, he is nonetheless comfortable here and becoming increasingly well known. After giving his body a break for several weeks, he is ready now to begin his training anew, this time focusing on the Arnold Classic competition, which he won the previous year. In the 20 year history of the show, only three other people have won the title more than once and Kai is out to show that his setback in Las Vegas was a temporary aberration, a bump in the road to greater success. This time, he will ignore the whispers of outsiders, train the way he does best, eat how he knows he should eat, and bring to the Arnold Classic stage the huge, ripped physique he has become known for. Kai's sponsoring supplement company, Muscle Meds, has sent me here to chronicle this continuing story. I am a documentary filmmaker, and even though I have made several DVDs about the behind-the-scenes world of bodybuilding, I still consider myself somewhat of an outsider to the sport. Less interested in the sets and reps, and more interested in how bodybuilding affects the whole of one's life. To me, the exploration of the bodybuilding mindset is as important if not more important, than the weights lifted. I am fascinated by the internal struggle, the psychology, and the motivations of this extreme and dramatic sport. And there is no better bodybuilder to discuss those aspects with than Kai Green. As he begins to focus on his upward trek to the Arnold Classic, Kai must first put behind him the disappointment of the Olympia. Although, as I argued in Overkill, I feel that his fourth place showing is respectable. Much of the bodybuilding community is too often using the F word to describe his performance in Las Vegas. I ask him if these comments have an effect on him. That's, I guess that's kind of why in the beginning, you know, I was very adamant about trying not to say failure, you know, and at the end of the first attempt at the Olympia, you know, I wanted to be very conscious of not saying the word failure because it's a very, very negative way of looking at it. Every word has, you know, a, a thought that, you know, is tied to it. I think thinking is an action, you know, it's not just, you know, something that's separate from the body. By thinking about something, like, like the man that cheats on his wife, or the man that leaves home and leave, abandons his children, it's not something that just happens, you know. We think, and as a result of thinking, we do. Those champions that you celebrate are the, the people that are visionaries. They are the people that, that have the idea and they apply this effort and thought and, 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 and follow through. And as a result, you know, this is their accomplishment. Their accomplishment is a product of those thoughts. Champions were an example of what happens when you aspire to leave the plane of average thinking 
when you dare to dream and you dare to go after that dream and you make these these thoughts and ideas become something more than just a dream you know they actually become um, a vision by applying the right action this vision can you know be a a commercial for the future and by continually working and acting and thinking in that specific way that puts you in the path of increase and reinforcing you know um, your effort with with deliberate action that is even inspired by the vision then that vision actually ends up becoming the portrait of your life around you. You've created it. And you expect as a result of believing not just in some place of foreign thought but with the continuing application of thought and effort every day, all day not the words of my mouth, but by the manifestations of my heart, my thinking center that is now able to be seen by the work that I do, not just when the camera is on, but when the camera is off, what time I get up in the morning, what are the things that I do throughout the course of my day, why is it that I'm able to go to bed being able to say 1,000 things that I've been able to do in the course of this day that makes this day an effective day or a day of efficient action because these efficient actions when we start adding them up not just today but tomorrow the next day the day after that a month two months three months four months five months it's not a surprise six months later when you see when the world is able to see the manifestation of that Kai impresses me once again this day with his dedication and focus. He has a philosophy of positive thinking and positive action that he can speak about at length, almost like a preacher on Sunday. This mindset should serve him well as he trains to recapture his title. One of the requests that I get most often from Kai supporters is to get him to divulge details of his diet. I'm not sure how knowing what and how much he eats in a day could be useful other than to satisfy one's curiosity. I mean, the guy is 300 pounds on his way to the Arnold Classic. His diet can't possibly work for anyone other than himself and maybe a handful of elite athletes. Still, I dutifully ask him and as always find him reluctant to give details. Basically, you know, we're talking about not getting distracted by the crap, the diet, the, the sets and reps, uh, uh, this exercise versus that one, um, who's your biggest competition at the show, is it that your, listen, all of that is distraction. You're getting caught up in crap. None of that is really in the equation at all. None of it. None of it. None of it is physical. None of it is, is, is nutrition. None of it is calories and proteins. And all. all of those things are tools. They're tools. But they're not the whole picture. The pic People will look at your accomplishment and expect you to be able to teach immediately. I want to get big arms. I see that guy in the gym with the biggest arms. I'm just, I'm just going to ask him, hey, dude, what should I do? His journey is another journey. This journey that you're talking about, if you're asking him how to get your arms like that, is your own. So there's work there that he's not supposed to be able to do. There are questions that he's not supposed to be able to answer and not supposed to be asked. It doesn't matter how he got there. His mother may have 21 inch arms without even working out. What you do need to do is, hey, it can be done. You know, now how you go about getting there is entirely up to you. Now, with that said, though, if he tells you, hey, look, man, it starts with desire. Well, then that's really where it starts. And ultimately, that's what's going to take you to get where you're trying to go. Clearly, Kai does not consider himself a teacher. And yet he is unmistakably poised to be just that. As I saw when I sat in on Sean Ray's Muscle Camp 2009.
What happens at a muscle camp is there's five major body parts that we train. Chest, shoulders, back, legs, and arms. We'll break the campers up into groups. There's about eight per station. We've got two to three pros manning each station. They'll give their opinions on how to do exercises, what little secrets they have, people that inspire them, why you're doing what you're doing. So you, even though you know how to lift, you may not know how or why Kevin does the things that he does for his world-class shoulders. Well, we've got Kevin here, we've got Sean Roden, Jason Arntz, Vinny Galanti. We've got various levels of professionals here to give you the advice on how they do it and why they do it. Kai has chosen to teach legs, of course, with Evan Santapani. The day starts out a bit awkward with both Kai and Evan a little unsure of what exactly they should be showing. Yeah, so I guess we're going to actually uh, work on legs. Then we're going to talk about you know, some, maybe some fundamentals of leg training. Eventually, they settle on teaching squatting technique. I imagine so many times drawing a line on the floor, splitting that line with my feet, turning my feet out, my head up, my chest is up, and I'm coming down to the bottom of this movement. Now, when I'm here, because I'm not sitting forward, because I'm sitting back. Now what I'm able to do is in order to blast out of the bottom of this, this, this uh, the bottom position on the squat, I'm able to recruit my glutes and my hamstrings, quads, muscle it up to the top. I watch as the groups cycle through every 10 minutes or so, and Kai and Evan polish their presentation. You're gonna get here, you're gonna get down here. You're focused on the exercise and you're thinking about the body as you want it to be. You're going to need to be able to open up from in, from deep up inside your hips. Why? Because I'm not trying to sit here like this. I'm trying to sit here. I'm uncomfortable. I have much reason to rock backwards and forwards. But now when I drop that pelvis, now what's going to happen is I'm able to, I'm able to recruit my quads to catch the resistance that is coming down. Our glutes and our hamstrings will come in online to help support our lower back, to help take the stress over our lower back. Um, it will also give us time to let our lower back kind of recover a little bit in between reps while doing the, you know, very aggressive uh, set of squats. But also taking them in and thinking about stretching those muscles, which are again, inside, the, the adductor muscles, and they sit on the inside of the upper inner thigh. And it's important, and I'm gonna show you why. Now my legs are working. And because we also talked about opening up and stretching these, these, these um, adductor muscles earlier, now we're able to see how they come into play too, to help stabilize your femur bones, and hold them in place, okay? So now, get here. Let's try that. So now think, think about this. If it is possible, then you will do it. Okay. So if it's possible, then it just means that right now, there's probably this. some other things that you may need to start to think about doing mm -hmm. to make this happen. Kai looks to me to be a natural teacher, and so I'm a little unsure why he does not feel confident doing it. Let me find out first if that's something that I really want to do, and then maybe then, if it is, you know, I'll take the same passion, the same things that are a part of me and invest it into that venture. But I haven't, I haven't, I haven't figured that out yet. But right now, what I'm investing my thoughts, my energy, my effort, this whole thing that is me into is the pursuit of these dreams that I'm producing. They're the product of 
my focus, my effort, the, 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 the best intent, focus and efforts of people that are investing in this dream. Watch the table. Despite his reluctance to assume the role of mentor, he nonetheless steps up to the plate when Muscle Meds proposes an instructional segment for the DVD. Kai Green Redemption is made possible by Muscle Med, the makers of Code Red. Code Red combines a clinically proven dosage of the pharmaceutically modified compound glycocarn with powerful anabolic agents, ergogenic optimizers, and ROS neutralizers to make the most scientifically superior bodybuilding supplement you can buy. Before you step into the gym, prepare your body for the best workout ever with Code Red. Everything starts from the floor up. So from the floor, hamstring, glute, quad, quarter turn, turn. Then you open up. You open up from the rear. Still flexing your hamstring and your glutes. Quarter turn to the right. Kai takes some time out of his contest preparations to instruct a young bodybuilder in the fine art of posing. What was initially supposed to be just a few pointers evolves into an unexpectedly painful and exhausting training session. Since the early days of his career, Kai Green has distinguished himself as an innovative poser. Combining fluid dance moves with a hip-hop sensibility, he has both fascinated and angered lovers of the sport to this day. But here today in Brooklyn, he is taking it all the way back to basics. Starting with a superset of straight leg deadlifts and an unusual use of the leg curl machine to target the glutes, Kai plunges his new protege into this specialized posing workout. With only a month to go before defending his crown at the 2010 Arnold Classic, Kai taking time and energy out of his daily schedule is quite a gift. A gift that I'm not sure this amateur bodybuilder is too grateful for at this moment. Oh, shit. Jason Myers is an economics student at the University of Pennsylvania. Though he grew up not far from Kai in New York City, his early life experiences with a warm and nurturing family couldn't have been more different. Still, he identifies strongly with Kai and is a fervent supporter. After winning the overall at the 2009 NPC Brooklyn Grand Prix, Jay went on to a disappointing placing at his next show. Knowing that he had to do something to up his game, he jumped at the chance to meet Kai and pick up some pointers. However, I get the feeling that this balls-to-the-wall training session was a little more than he bargained for. All right. I'd say that was scary at first, but then I understood, you know, what needed to be done. All right. In order to pose in front of judges to put your muscles on display, we use something called isometric contraction. What a bodybuilder on stage is trying to do is to show his physique um, at his best in each and every pose. In order to do that, um, a bodybuilder may have to contract every muscle um, in his body. This is the third set. All right. 
And it can be very difficult to think about, well, I gotta flex all the muscles of my body that are at least in viewership of the judges from this particular angle. That doesn't make sense. I, I, I probably pass out at the thought of it. Pull them up. You gotta pull your pants up. See, your crotch is too low. Oh, okay. That means you can't open your legs. I got you. None of that. None of that hip hop shit here, dog. Pull your pants up. Let's go. High, 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 high. You lean them up high. You need range of motion. You need a place to go. Okay. There you go. All right, now sit down. Let's get it. All right. Glutes are responsible for pelvic flexion. Flex your glutes. Wide as you can. Wider, wider, wider. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. And you know, I'm just going, just trying to eke out the reps and you know, Kai's is, Kai's in the back of my ear, just come on, let's go, let's go. And he's just like, his face and it's just intensity in his face. It's just like, okay, like I've got to move this weight until I can't move it anymore. And when I can't move it, put it down. There's a certain level of intensity that you need to move up. And it's, it has to be there. And for some people, either they have it or they don't have it. I think when I saw Kai that day, it made me realize, like, okay, I realize what this means so to have that level of intensity. Oh, okay. So you, you, you're not even, your hamstring is still big. So you gotta no go stretch, all the way. There's no stretch in your hamstring. Okay. So you gotta move your toes out the way, which means you're gonna have to curl your foot under. Flexion on your ankle joint is gonna allow you a better range of motion. Oh. So try to touch the floor with your heel. Okay. Dig through the air with your heel. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Another thing, push your pelvis against the bench. Remember when we were on the stand mask and I told you what your boots are responsible for? Pelvic pressure. pressure. All right, by doing that, you're gonna get a bigger range of motion on your hamstring. Uh -huh. So you're gonna be able to contract your hamstring more efficiently. Okay. Stuff with your head, don't do that. Just concentrate, focus, level your body, straighten your body out. Whenever you start doing a movement, you start that means your concentration is breaking down. You're oh. setting yourself up to get hurt. Okay. Number that's one thing. Number two, imagine there's a line in the middle of this, this padding. Uh huh. What you want to do is allow each foot to occupy to almost split it. That makes sense. Uh huh. So you want your concentration of energy to sit in the center of this padding. Okay. Does that makes sense. So Though it may seem, at first glance, like Kai is just getting into some of the machines backwards, these movements are very well thought out. It must be noted that specialized posing training like this is to be done in addition to your regular muscle building routine.
The object of this training is to reinforce the connections between muscle groups that come into play during the mandatory poses. The preparation for this begins at the floor. Kai explains. Right here? Okay. Bodybuilders, while in competition, have developed a, uh, a way of developing a checklist. And that checklist is to start, take your mind, and you start by contracting your muscles from the floor up. So you're making this inventory, this checklist, I'm coming, you know, an assessment of the floor underneath me, I'm able to contract my feet if necessary. And it's, it may sound like it doesn't make sense, but it, it really, really does because the plantar muscles of your feet, you know, are required to help you when you start thinking about balance. In order to do that though, you turn the sole of your foot almost into fingertips and you're feeling the floor beneath you and by being able to do that you're able to now make decisions about how to um, aid yourself, your body, in finding balance in order to distribute your body weight better so you can hit a pose better. It's on the eat. So what do all of these exercises have to do with posing? Well, much like a musician practicing scales, these repetitive movements create neural pathways, mind-to-muscle connection that Kai often talks about. In order to be able to connect with your muscles, you need to be able to have a very sharp mind-to-muscle relationship. Okay. Um, the more you beat and bludgeon or create stimuli sent to these muscles, the more a beaten path you create. You know, by you being able to have that beaten path to those muscles, now when you're on stage, that's what you're pulling from to flex them and hold them under contraction. Isometric tension while the audience and the judges are viewing you on stage body parts that you're not able to contract like that, you're not able to quite make the connections as sharp, you know, will be visible on stage. They'll look like they're not responsive. Someone may say, flex your abs. In your mind you may say, I am flexing them, aren't I? Mm -hmm. But by having a really sharp mind and muscle connection with your mind and your abs, no one needs to tell you that. You know how to do it. You blow down and contract, it's there. You think it and it happens. You think it and it happens. What you're trying to do is contract your muscles against the resistance. You know, by contracting your muscles against greater amounts of resistance is how you're able to stimulate muscular hypertrophy. But the primary goal isn't to move weight. As much as the primary goal is to contract muscle. But you see when you start posing, to pose more efficiently to display the muscle you have, it'll go back to the same things that we just did in there. It was tough. I mean the whole workout I just I felt like I was gonna vomit the entire work. It was it was bad. Like I, I remember getting there and I'm thinking, oh okay, this isn't gonna be bad, you know. He's he's getting ready for the Arnold Classic, he's tired, you know, we're, this is gonna be short, we're gonna be out of here. I remember finishing lower body and thinking we were done. And then we're in the locker room and I'm thinking, oh, this is great. You know, I can I can eat and relax and go home. He's like, No, we have to train upper body now and I'm just like, not again. <laughs> I don't wanna do this again. What did that feel? Chicken, ground beef, and brown rice. Ooh. I know I probably shouldn't have the barbecue sauce in front of me. Why? Oh, you gonna bother me?
I remember stuff like that used to bother me like crazy getting ready for a show. When's the last time you've been a pro? <laughs> Never, okay. I don't say that to be arrogant. I'm saying that to say this. You know, I mean, how many shows have you done? Four. I've probably done maybe 60, 70 wow. shows. Wow, okay. So, the point I'm trying to, and, and mind you, I'm still a baby in comparison to somebody like Milo Sarcha, who's probably done almost 100 professional bodybuilding shows. Let alone what he did when he was an amateur. You understand my point? The point that I'm making is there has to come a time when we stop crawling like babies, we stop acting as children, and we become the men that we are destined to be. You know? Um, oh, yeah. I, well, I hate you for eating barbecue sauce in front of me. I choose to do this. You know what I mean? This is. And fortunate enough at this point to be able to earn a living from it, you know? So the hang-ups about getting my discipline in order, have my mind in the right place to allow me to stay on my diet when I need to and not be bothered by oh, the sight of, of somebody else having something that, you know, at another time in my off-season I might enjoy. That's there's no, yeah, there's no place for that now. I struggle with enough things now. You know, the last thing I would need is to have fundamentals like that to still be struggling with. You know? Well, I can't stay on my diet now. That's, that's done now. There's just too much energy and too much thought that goes into this thing all day, you know. You sing right here with me now, and we just, we had to break this into two sessions, you know. This is two sessions here. This is not my first time in the gym today. So this is what I'm doing all day. If I were to be doing this with just the picture in my mind of what I look like right now, I might stop. I might lose faith. I might become disenchanted and lose interest. I might become overwhelmed by fear and doubt. You know, I might become content. Hey, look, I look good enough right now. That's it. Hey, that, that doesn't look too bad. You know, but working in mind with the vision that I have in my mind, then okay. Everything you do becomes a training session. It's a step to get toward that, closer to that, closer to that. So that's where your mind is all day. Every meal, every hand to your mouth with a spoon or fork full of whatever. Every time you cook your food, every time you pack your meals, every time you get on a train or pack your clothes in your bag. You know. And the world may not understand what you're doing. Everyone is not going to see your vision until you unveil it, you know. And there's, you know, probably very few people that would be able to get on board with the vision, you know. So the people that you do have in your corner, you have to hold them close to you because they're near and dear. Leave it to Kai to turn a simple lesson in stage presentation into a philosophical treatise on determination, discipline, and gratitude. I can only imagine that this day has also become a physical and mental challenge for Jason, who must certainly be examining his commitment to his sport at this moment, much like Kai did in Las Vegas. After this short break, the conclusion of the posing training session. Kai Green Redemption is brought to you by MuscleMed's Performance Technologies, makers of Methyl Burn Extreme. Get red, get shredded, get super peeled with Methyl Burn Extreme. Go to www.musclemedsrx.com. Clearly running out of steam, 
Jason has to dig deep to keep going and to keep his dinner down. I remember getting there and I'm thinking, oh, okay, this isn't going to be bad, you know, he's, he's getting ready for the Arnold Classic, he's tired, you know, we're, this is going to be short, we're going to be out of here. I think we must have been there for at least an hour between the cardio and the training, and then we stopped to eat, and then went back to train upper body. He definitely emphasized that, it, that there are workouts that are done in addition to your main workouts, so you don't, you don't want to use weights that are so heavy that it's like you're doing your main workouts twice. The focus wasn't so much on weight as much as the contractions and the intensity of the contractions. That's not to say you use five pounds and you know, flex, but if five pounds is what you need to get the job done, then five pounds is what you need to get the job done. All right, so, you like this. You're like this. This is wrong. Uh, you need more skills. You need some of them. So, even here. Why? Because with my pelvis here, I'm able to create a connection in my glute, my hamstring, and my calf if need be. This is posing. When you flex your upper body on stage, you're not just up here. It's everything from the floor up. Ready to grip the bar so now. Yeah, you need a little wider. Quarter turns. Everything starting from the front, from the floor up. So you always take a minute, place your feet, turn my heels in, my toes out. That gives my knees also a place to turn out, which accentuates the sweep on the two quads. Inside of your calf. Open up, all right? Okay. So in order to make sure that you're able to contract all of the muscles that are visible um, for the viewing eyes of the judges, we get the front, the side, the rear, um, you have a checklist and that checklist starts with the floor. So a lot of bodybuilders talk about tensing from the floor up. So your checklist is, okay, my feet up through your, your calves, up through your quads, up through the muscles of your upper quads. Are those things tense? Okay, from the floor up to your waist now in your checklist, are all those muscles tense as they're supposed to be? Yes, okay. And then you continue from your waist up. It does require a certain amount of endurance to stand there and flex a, a lot of different muscle groups in your body simultaneously at the same time and then maintain this expression that is, I am cool, I am good. Bend the knees, drop your pelvis, and pull. Right. You know, for the bicep. Good shot. Watch grip. Sorry, 
was telling you, you know, with your feet, flex your hamstring, flex your glute, and pull down from here. The same thing here. And this is like a lunge. One leg back, turn your knees out, flexion on your calf, hamstring, up to your glutes, and your lats. Make sense? We get downstairs and we're like going through the training. I'm just like, why are we doing all these things back to back? And then as soon as we, as soon as you know the tops come off and the bottoms come off, and you're and we're we're practicing posing, it all makes sense. And when we're hitting poses, everything kind of just starts to click. I'm like, okay, that's why we did that exercise. That's why we did this exercise. That's why we did this exercise. And it's not until the end when everything kind of came together. That's when everything made sense. In order to try to be mindful of showing your sweep on your quads, you're going to turn your knees out, but you can't turn your knees out without trying to turn your feet out. But you can't turn your feet out without somewhat being aware of the ground beneath your feet. Okay, I want to be able to, to show the contour, a pleasing contour line around the entirety of my body. Um, so if you were to think about drawing a silhouette, taking a body, turning it into just a blackened image, and drawing a line around, a contour line around the, the silhouette. In order to create the image of this silhouette that corresponds with the idea that we know is competitive bodybuilding, then um, in order to do that, you have to position yourself well. In order to, positioning all starts with a good foundation, so everything has to start from the floor. Kai is something of a contradiction a reluctant teacher, yet with much to offer to the next generation of bodybuilders. I know that he certainly challenged and inspired this young bodybuilder today, both physically and mentally. However, his point about concentrating on winning the Arnold Classic is a good one. The show is only about a month away, and there is much work yet to be done. I will see Kai one more time before we go to Cleveland to shoot the leg training we didn't get last year in Vegas. I'm happy to see that Kai is healthy this time around, and as he is fond of saying, on the path of increase. The release of Overkill was like nothing I'd ever experienced in my five years of making bodybuilding DVDs. The outpouring of appreciation for the documentary was amazing. Overkill and Kai were everywhere on the internet. Especially YouTube. As I traveled to gyms and contests this past year, I began to ask competitors about Kai in order to begin to understand this phenomenon, this Kai cult. He's able to tap into whatever he's feeling and he puts it out into his work. And that is inspiring to me. I think he gives uh, bodybuilders a, a bit more of a dimension than just eating, sleeping, and training. It's like you're looking at a lion. <laughs> it's a beast. He is a beast. His presentation's a little, you know, as some might think, unorthodox, but it, it's, you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about entertainment. I think he, he definitely brings it. Here we have a drawing that I did of one of my favorite bodybuilders, Kai Green. I also put out a call on the forums for fans to explain their fascination with Kai Green as best they could. Basically, the man thinks like I think. Some of the tribute took the form of original art. Many Kai fans share his love of artistic expression of all kinds. Others recorded short videos for me, doing their best to put into words what makes Kai special and how his bodybuilding career has inspired them. Kai Green is, without a doubt, the most entertaining and original bodybuilder that I've ever seen. Whether it's his rags to riches story, his humble demeanor, posing, or mind-blowing physique, Kai Green is impossible to ignore. I loved him before. I loved him before he won the Arnold Classic. I loved him a while ago. These videos came from all over the world. I was beginning to sense how widespread this Kai cult was becoming. Kai Green, I'm a big fan of his because, because of the way he started. You know, he started from nothing. He had zero. I was reading that he was raised in a foster home. And he still managed to make it to the top. 
Kai did indeed start from nothing. Adrift in the foster care system as a youth, nearly illiterate into his late teens, Kai eventually learned how to read, and it wasn't long before he began to discover the power of positive thinking that he now speaks about so often. It was evident to me from the first time we met that he was very spiritual and very philosophical, though at the time I was unaware of the origins of his philosophy. This whole game is about being, being a champion of mine. And then when I went to Las Vegas to visit Kai and Oscar, there were some of the same concepts and phrases coming out of the speakers of the car as we listened to audiobooks while driving back and forth to the gym. And we can get what we want to have and can become what we want to be. I began to get a sense that Kai was tapping into a philosophy of which I was as yet unaware. He seemed to be operating by principles that empowered him, but were mysterious to me. I began to ask around and finally got a few answers from a colleague of mine who had seen my overkill footage and recognized the audio that had been playing in the car. There are a lot of uh, teachers, there's a, there are a lot of authors out there who talk about how to create your own reality. There was a great movie called The Secret a few years ago that talks about this very thing. The moment that you decide, decision changes everything. What you think about grows. What you focus on grows. You create your own reality. As I saw in Las Vegas, Kai is deeply immersed in this power of the mind philosophy. The principles of positive thought are nothing new. The Secret is only the latest in a long line of books and movies about this topic. Two of the most famous early books on the subject are The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles and As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. This philosophy was then built upon by other authors, like Napoleon Hill, seen here in a film from the early 1960s, in which he describes his key to success. That psychologists have discovered a natural law which is the very foundation of all personal successes. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Isn't that a profound statement? Kai's true fans understand, but not everyone gets what Kai is talking about. These concepts, though they seem simple, sometimes take repeated exposure before sinking in. But there's some things that I think that I've read at other times in my life that I really wasn't ready to read. So as a result, I could say or boast later on, yeah, I read that, you know. And at the same time, though, dismiss it as I don't need to re-explore that. I don't need to even really think about that. And the idea that it contains, probably for me, just don't really have much merit. Not realizing that's what I'm doing. It may take continually re-exposing yourself to that idea and those groups of ideas and then exposing yourself to it again and then meditating on it again and again. It may require some work on your part to understand it. Because you may hear this and think, what are you talking about success? And listen, you know, success before it happens, Oh, that's, that's blasphemy. Some people would probably, you know, another time would probably want to hang you on a cross or something, or burn you at a stake, you know. What are you trying to predict the future, you know? But I believe you can predict the future. You know, you can predict the future if you're saying that, hey, in this moment, I'm going to do what I am supposed to do. And what I'm supposed to do is determined by what my goals are. Fans of the sport are comfortable with their favorite athletes talking about training and food, but many get frustrated with the audacity of a bodybuilder spouting philosophy. He's basically saying, you know, if you're not achieving what you want to achieve, that's on you. And you know, for some people to hear that, it's, that's tough for anyone to hear. He is standing up for what he believes is right. And it's obviously working for him. I mean, look, he's not trying to sell anybody anything. He's just sharing his experience. And he happens to be on a big stage, figuratively and literally. And he's using that stage to share his good fortune. And he wants to help other people. Now, I'm not going to try to say that I know how to explain a whole bunch of metaphysical blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I am a believer. I am a believer that, you know, we shape and create the life that we choose. And I believe that our, you know, the tools that we have to do that um, is our mind. I'm beginning to understand that this power of the mind philosophy is not just wishful thinking and not just for bodybuilders. It's for anyone who wants to achieve anything in life. 
I read some of the books and find myself watching with more interest as Kai and Oscar apply these principles to winning this upcoming competition. It's two weeks before the Arnold Classic. Kai and Oscar are preparing for their last heavy leg workout before the show. They've invited me and a still photographer to document the event. Obviously, Kai has adjusted well to the spotlight since the Olympia and welcomes us along for the ride. The many contrasts between this workout and the footage I shot in Las Vegas are too obvious to overlook. He seems completely oblivious to the presence of my video camera, and even the photographer's flashes don't seem to phase him. Kai is not struggling. He looks strong and focused. Clearly, whatever difficulties he was experiencing in Vegas are absent here at home. Going to Vegas for the Olympia, we were out of our element. It was one of the hardest preps for him and for me. And it was the first time ever in the years that I trained with Kai that uh, it was during one training session, I think you were there, that he... Um, he questioned. He we actually, I think, left, left the gym early. You know, I gave him a cheat meal, got his breath, and we continued. But it was it was a hard prep, and um, mm. it was, I say, unnecessarily hard at times because, um, looking back, it there wasn't it was there wasn't a need to go out there. But if you asked him back then, you know, we had reasons, both of us had reasons in our minds to go. And if you never take risks, if you never, you're never going to learn. And that's something that I know we'll never do again. In Brooklyn, it was in our home base. Uh, uh, we started earlier and it was just overall good prep. Um, mentally, he was in a good place. He always prepares hard. He always gives it 100%, whether in Vegas, under the heat, or in cold Brooklyn in December and January. He always pushes it. Between each set, Oscar continues to reinforce the mindset necessary to enable Kai to push himself past the twin thresholds of muscular fatigue and physical pain. This is one place where those power of the mind principles that they speak of must certainly be coming into play. Positive visualization is one thing, but here is where the work is required to turn that vision into reality and Kai must bring every muscle fiber to bear on completing these reps. Everything starts from your thoughts and everything starts from your belief. If you're able to change that in someone, you're able to change someone's life. That is the power that we have as a coach, as a teacher, to teach someone knowledge. People can gain that in books but to teach the power of thinking, that they can change their lives, and you can change the, the way they view life. I think that's, that's a powerful thing. As the weights get heavier, Kai becomes more withdrawn, 
digging deeper within himself to complete the task. Confidence comes from doing. A person can read books, a person can listen. Once you make a decision about something and you put action behind it and conviction, you start to build confidence. No one can teach you wisdom, no one can teach you confidence. It's something that comes from within you. But it comes from doing, from moving, from action, from movement. It doesn't come from sitting down or criticizing. It doesn't come from even learning. It comes from actually living your life and doing it.
After these exhausting squats, Kai actually goes on to perform several more sets of leg presses, leg curls, and leg extensions. A testament to his stamina and fortitude. What I tried my best to bring out in the athletes that I train, to bring out the best in them through their thinking, through their thoughts, through their mind. If I get to that, then I know that their goals are as good as done. From the moment they get it mentally, the path, the road, is not hard anymore. It's not difficult because that driven purpose in their minds in time they'll attain it. Do you want to beef up? Get Carnivore, the world's first all-beef protein isolate. Carnivore delivers the muscle-building power of real beef to help you pack on slabs of muscle. 350% more concentrated than steak. 20 times the creatine of beef added branched-chain amino acids for increased anabolic effect. Available in four delicious flavors. Beef up your physique with Muscle Med's Carnivore, the most sought-after anabolic protein ever created. The Arnold Classic is a massive three-day festival of athletics held in Columbus, Ohio and capped by one of the most competitive bodybuilding contests in the world. Thousands of people cram the Columbus Convention Center to witness demonstrations and amateur athletic competitions of all kinds. The Expo is a major draw of the festival. Each year it gets bigger and bigger. Here in the mad crush of hugely muscled flesh, the purveyors of every kind of muscle building apparatus and supplement possible push their wares. For the first time ever, I have brought an assistant to help with the shooting. We are scheduled to cover several events in several locations, but the sheer number of attendees makes moving from one venue to another very difficult. Navigating across the entire length of the Expo Hall during prime time can take up to 20 minutes. Victor Martinez is here at the MHP booth greeting fans. Victor is an old friend of Kai's and one of his most dangerous competitors. But this year, he has decided to skip the Arnold Classic and concentrate all his energies on the Olympia later in the year. But that's another story. Muscle Meds is here, of course, but not Kai. True to form, Kai is sequestered away the day before the show. Refusing all contact from us or any of the magazines and forums, Kai is doing his thing, focusing and meditating, and from what I've learned, it is not a spectator sport. Prejudging is at 10 a.m. This is what the competitors have prepared for. Having brought their bodies to an extreme state of dehydration, they are now ready for the judges to evaluate the musculature that has taken them a lifetime to produce, and a severe dedication to hone to perfection. As always, Kai's trainer and mentor is right here beside him to take care of the little details. I've done this many times with him and with many other professionals and amateurs, but it's still always intense. When you get to the backstage, my concern is that mentally, again, mentally, that he's meant to be calm and that he's relaxed. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably more nervous, but I don't show it. To be at, to be at my best, um, I could not do it by myself, and to even be remotely close to my best. 
You know, a lot of people may say, ah, oh, this guy he was at the show, he was like 95% or he was 80%. I, you know, I've seen him better. Okay, whatever. Reality is, in order to be that, I couldn't do it by myself. You know, I have, I have the fortune of having, you know, people with me that have made an investment in my dreams. And when I succeed, so do they. That's just on stage, you guys will start. Hey, Tony, man. How are you, sir? Hello. Come on, Tony. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, guys. With the individual routines completed, it's now time for the comparisons. This is the moment everyone has been waiting for, the first call out. We'd like to see Dexter Jackson, please. The athletes are brought one by one to the center of the stage in no particular order. Really? But the first call out reveals the judges' preferences for the top four. The audience knows this. Hi, Green. Branch Warren.
The nighttime show is just that, a show. But almost all the decisions are made here, now, in the stripped down presentation of the prejudging. A limited audience, a simple curtain as a backdrop, no distractions from the bodies. Every minute detail is scrutinized again and again. The athletes have been sure to remove every ounce of fat and every drop of water from their systems that they can. The judges are aware of this fragile state and they give them a break from time to time from the exhausting posing. As Kai has said, flexing every single muscle in your body over and over again is not easy. Three guys. You're not done. The judges examine all the competitors against each of the other competitors in the call-out group, and they shuffle and reshuffle them until they and we are exhausted. Prejudging, it's back to the hotel to get something to eat and to rest up for the night show. Shooting video at the Arnold Classic Evening Show is a completely different beast from anything I've yet experienced. Crowded. Complicated. But I want to get the set change started first. Okay. Frantic and fast paced. Okay, here we go. 15 second pose down. Everybody's out. Backstage at the Arnold is like a tight and oiled machine populated by a seasoned crew, celebrities, secret service, and even an autograph seeker or two. It's in the midst of this mayhem that the competitors must focus on the task at hand, putting on a good show.
phenomenal Kai Green. Kai's posing routine gets him the coveted Most Entertaining Award. But what everyone is really waiting for is the final decision. The buzz tonight is that Phil Heath could possibly take first place. Rumors have been circulating since prejudging that Green and Heath are within a point or two of each other. Will the judges go with the longer lines of Phil's style of physique or award first place to a mass monster like Kai? The competitors have some fun joking around with each other during the final pose down. But they become serious once again as the judges return with their verdict. Michael O'Hearn from Bodybuilding.com will present the trophy. As expected, the contest comes down to only Green and Heath. To the second place finisher, Bill Heath! Our first place trophy will be presented by Tim Bentley of GNC. A check for $130,000 by Gerard Denti from MHP. $20,000 Audemars Piquet watch by Rhett Reichardt, Reichardt.com, goes to the defending Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic Champ. Hi, Green! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Governor Schwarzenegger, to greet our champion, Ty Green, back-to-back, 2009-2010. When Kai receives his award, his demeanor is much different than one year ago. The first time he won the Arnold Classic, he was very emotional. Today, it seems like the decision was no surprise. Man, there is no way to talk about this without sounding really cocky or something and that's not really what this is it's very easy to mistake it as as being cocky or super confident how's it feel the second time around i mean the, the first nothing can ever replace the first time as we all know how's these are things feel? that i prayed for these are things that i consciously have worked for and because you were continuing to ask for and expect for the delivery of these things and you were committed to continuing to work to manifest these things then it makes it a little bit easier to accept understand and expect the outcome that we saw at the honor class and yeah once it does happen and the world's able to see it they may be surprised you know, and maybe to some degree if you were able to close your eyes and forget about everything that you've been thinking about, everything that your mind has been invested in, maybe you're surprised too. But if you are reflective enough and if you're conscious enough to remember, then you realize, nah, you know what? Like, yeah, it's a good thing. What does it feel like? feels amazing and I encourage anyone, anyone out there who ever had an idea, a thought about something that they'd like to accomplish, or they'd like to, but, it, but they know it would, it would demand the best of their efforts and the, the most of their concentration and, and everything that they had inside of them in order to get there and make it happen. I encourage you to do it. And when you do, then you'll know exactly how I feel right now. Very good. Earlier in the evening, Sylvester Stallone won a Lifetime Achievement Award. I can't help but notice that his speech seemed to touch upon some of the same principles that Kai has been speaking about to me these past months. You know, I, I, I truly believe, and people throw the word around dreams, it's all, it's all about dreams. You know, and by the way, dreams cost nothing, they're free. Uh, the hard part is just keeping them going, and please keep them going, because 
we're here for one simple reason. He believed in the dream, I believed in the dream, and our dreams come true, and there's no reason every one of yours can't either. Thank you very much. Maybe the power of positive thought isn't such a secret after all. Kai Green Redemption is made possible by MuscleMed, bodybuilding supplements, methyl arimatest, hexogen, enoxide, carnivore, carnivore liquid protein shots, methyl burn extreme, and code red. Learn more about the science of the supplements that helped Kai Green win the Arnold Classic by visiting the MuscleMeds website today. Go to www.musclemedsrx.com. Back home once again in Brooklyn, I continue to shoot Kai in and out of the gym, trying to record for posterity the making of a legend. For Kai, the elation of the Arnold Classic win is now just a memory. As amazing as the second win was, and although he feels his reputation has been redeemed, this was not the big prize that he had his eye on. For the next six months, Kai must concentrate on the Olympia to the exclusion of all else. But it will be difficult. Greater success means that greater demands will be made on his time and energies. And big changes are coming. Although Kai emphasizes that he takes little note of his competitors when preparing for a contest, it is hard for us to ignore the hurdles he faces. Branch Warren is always a formidable threat to show up in great condition. Phil Heath is gaining momentum and is often touted as Kai's closest rival. Victor Martinez has taken the entire year off to train exclusively for the Olympia and plans to surprise everyone as the dark horse. And Jay Cutler will return. One thing's for sure, the reigning Mr. Olympia isn't going to give up his title without a fight. From now until the Olympia, all of Kai's focus must be directed toward that one day, that one hour in September, when he takes the stage with the best bodybuilders in the world and finds his place among them. Um, last year, we did our best under real hard conditions, and we got fourth. This year, we're a year wiser. We have the honor classic victory. We learn from our mistakes. So going forward, I know that the the physique that he will present will be the best Kai Green the world has ever seen and that physique is worthy of a Mr. Olympia. There's a success that you're able to walk away from this experience with and it's your responsibility to use it effectively. Be encouraged when you see someone else achieve something. Make sure that you understand what is at the core of their success. In this moment, I'm encouraging each and every one of you to understand and acknowledge that the power of mind, the power of the ability to make a decision, the power to decide to be and tap into my better resources are at the core of my success today. And I challenge you to take that home with yourself. The portrait of my life that I choose to create is done so by my mind. How does that apply? Realize today that you have power, as do we all. Thank you. Amateur editors have long sampled the classic bodybuilding videos and made remix tributes of varying quality. These rogue artists walk in the gray area of copyright infringement, but they do it for the love of the sport, not to make money. 
We now live in a mashup culture in which the pop creations of the past and present are endlessly and ecstatically recycled. But not just bodybuilding, everything from pop music, movies and TV, to quotes from scientist icons like Carl Sagan are being put into the creative blender and transformed into something new. I have to admit that I was surprised and more than a little pleased to see Overkill within weeks of its release being sampled in this way. Even the straightforward video that Jay Nova had created for me was sampled and recycled into yet another remix by a YouTuber known simply as Zosny. Kai Green is, without a doubt, the most entertaining and original. exactly how I feel right now. Very good. Gentlemen, court to your right, please. Another quarter turn. Another quarter turn, please. Face front. Group, please. Guys, file off. Gentlemen, quarter turn to your right, please. Another quarter turn.
Another quarter turn. Face front. Okay, let's take these guys off, please. Thank you. Gentlemen, quarter turn to your right, please. Another quarter turn, please. Another quarter turn, please. Another quarter turn. Face front. Front double by assistance. Side tricep.
Okay, judges would like to uh, wipe off a minute here. Nope, don't go anywhere, guys. Get the towels out of here, guys. We, just, we need to suck it up here. Come on. Okay, Branch and Ty, switch places, please. Branch and Ty. Dexter, we'd like you between uh, Branch and Ty, please. You guys ready? All right, again, we'll take you through, take you through relax first, give you a little more breathing time here, okay? Corner turn to your right, please. Corner turn. Another quarter turn, please. Face front. All right, guys, let's go. Front double bicep. Let's go. Side chest. Back, double bicep. Side tricep. Abdominal thigh. Most muscular. And relax. Okay, guys, you can step off, catch your breath, and have your back on the Yeah. 